Hello, welcome to West Enemy Sims. My name is Calvin and how are you doing in this retro review? We are going to look into the Sims 3 houses and lots bin houses. So if you missed the previous one which are the Sims 2 version of lots and houses bin review, the link is down in the description below. So let's get started with the Sims 3. The first lot is actually a park. It's Plum Puddle Park. Right, this park looks pretty generic with a lake in the middle. We have, uh, I think I faced at the wrong side of the lot. Uh, the one facing with the concrete pathway is supposed to face in front, I believe. And there's a gate on both ends that goes into the park with a nice pathway that is circling around the lake with terrain paint and it looks pretty nice, pretty natural looking with terrain paints with some benches and picnic tables all over okay this park seems pretty okay doesn't scream anything of a distinctive style which is what this park is aimed to be you can put it in any neighborhood you want so it is pretty well landscaped, a little bit too small though, so there's nothing much you can do. But I'm going to give this park 7. Our next lot is Aerial Dynamo with 2 bedroom and 1 bathroom. From the outside, it looks a bit, it's pretty obvious they are going for a modern look with a stone accents with wood paneling, with a garage at the side. Um, the main feature of this is this butterfly roof. Um, I don't think it looks really nice to me because I don't particularly favor butterfly roofs because if it rains, it will water will just gather right in the middle of the house. Uh, that's in real life, but not in the Sims. So let's look at how the inside looks. Okay, first thing we walked in will be a kitchen with marble tiling and really oddly looking we have a stone bench in the middle of a hallway Inside we have the bookshelf with living room area and then we can see there and then there's a dining table all the way to the end which is very weird because you have to walk from the kitchen to the dining area, this is really far for Sims to eat. I would swap the dining area and the living area to be closer to the kitchen. And the bedrooms are pretty small and pretty tight. And this bathroom over here, we have no mirror facing the sink. And then the full length mirror at the corner over there. Hmm, okay, this house doesn't look too bad actually. It does have the distinctive uh, modern look, uh, but then it didn't really push it that far. I have a lot of questionable choices of the design and layout. So overall, I'm going to give this house a 7. Next house is Brownstone Beauty with 4 bedrooms and 2 bathrooms. So this one is going to be a huge house. So looks from the outside, this house seems looks like an apartment building rather than a single family house with 3 stories tall with a staircase running behind, looks like a fire escape to me with iron fencing and iron columns and the whole layout is really rectangular in shape so it does look more like an apartment building to me so as we walk up in the front door and then we're going to look into this living room with four armchairs circling around it <laughs> and uh, a desk and a chair Pretty cohesive colouring to me. Um, the kitchen at the back and the bathroom seems pretty alright. Pretty compact, pretty well coloured. The dining room area 
we have a cabinet at the back upstairs will be our first bedroom we have a jack and jill bathroom over there we have two different tiles of color and this two single beds over this side all green and this side also bluish green at the same time further upstairs we have a nursery funny thing the nursery looks like this one of the largest rooms in this house and a bathroom with with two sinks which is completely unnecessary with two mirrors like that i think the bathroom upstairs is a little bit too big with a bathroom bedroom over the other side okay this is a perfect family house for a lot of sims with a lot of room to spare actually this looks a little bit better uh, in terms of coloring it's much more uh, cohesive style and some of the uh, design choices are a little bit too big for me so i'm going to give this house eight our next house is bulk eight with two bedrooms and two bathrooms okay we have another modern looking house with really squarish designs with a little pop out to make it a little bit different the windows are all over the place but i like the two-tone color scheme on the ground floor and the first floor and the parking spots are actually diagonal it's like that and the swimming pool at the back although i would put the fence around the swimming pool more so it won't be exposed at one side as we look inside hmm the furnishing looks really odd to me because these sofas and armchairs doesn't look very modern and the blues doesn't look right together and at the kitchen whoa we have the walls with green and pink and then the floor with blue and then the counters are so patterned it's so easy and 1980s style kind of kitchen the dining room with green and yellow tiny chairs with a wooden table with the color choices are really odd at the back we have a swimming pool upstairs it looks a little bit better i would say with green checkered bathrooms okay uh consistent for both sides of the bathroom actually one side is actually just a toilet the other side is the bath area the other bathroom which is yellow in color which has a shower and toilet which is yellow in color and we have the single bedrooms are look a little bit more better to me and there's a nursery at the back with really dull colors i don't think any toddler or baby would feel invited inviting to be in the nurse at nursery okay generally this has a lot of issues i would say the colors are really odd the mixed match of styles all, in, all over the place and the layout is really really weird so unfortunately i would have to give up head a six our next house is cabin fever with one bedroom and one bathroom so this will be a really small house and right off the bat the layout is really 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 boring because it's just a huge square with a little detail bump out of the roof like that to make it look a little bit different inside is pretty cozy with a kitchen with green sinks and green stove and an infinite fridge with countertops as eating areas with a small living room at the side here back there we have a bathroom with dark maroon and green tiles and this four poster bed which is really dark in color scheme this house isn't too bad actually although a little bit too 
I'm leaning more towards the boring side. At least the colors are, although a little bit dark, uh, it's cohesive all around. So, Cabin Fever is going to be a 7. Our next house is Cornucopia. Cornucopia has 3 bedrooms and 2 bathrooms. Outside this house is not as interesting because it's just a huge rectangular block with a bump out at the front. Windows are at least pretty consistent, pretty aligned well. Other than that, the colors are a little bit too dull but with the green stairs in front which is really weird. So look into inside. We have two coffee tables in the middle with the nice red pattern sofa set with that's matching with the wallpaper colors. Bathroom and kitchen sharing the same tiles which is pretty okay with yellow things pumping a uh, yellow pumping features like things and toilets which is again very weird. And the dining room is pretty okay. Upstairs we have this greenish toilet and sink that is way too bright for that bathroom. Walls and floors are really weird, we colored. We have these bedrooms are pretty alright, not too busy. At the same time, it's pretty empty and dark and you have to put in more lights to make it less dull. And on the master bedroom, it's really too big to me because there's nothing much on the other side with a whole lot of blue but it's a little bit more brighter than the other two bedrooms. Okay, generally, Cornucopia is just pretty decent. It's not too bad, but at the same time, not too exciting for, for me to see I, to choose this house. So, uh, interestingly, there's not a lot of landscaping for any of the houses in the lots and bins. So, Cornucopia is rated a 7. Next house is Everyday Lodge with two, three bedrooms and two bathrooms. Okay, wow, the texture of the wall outside is pretty, is pretty st stands out a lot. A brick and the stone tiles, and then there's a wooden deck in front, all monochrome colored. Let's look at the inside. Okay, we have this table with a it is cramped in living room area with a fireplace that's pretty cozy actually but they will make space for the bar over here which is really weird with face over the side and then pretty interesting they put a uh, cap counters and that's split with divided with a half wall in the middle and the dining area at the corner over there with bay window area and downstairs we also have a pretty cozy looking bedroom that's nothing much to complain with the bathroom following similar color schemes upstairs is pretty straightforward as well with us seeing there are two sides of the two sides of the house both are leading towards separate bedrooms so, which is weird that you have to go through the balcony to go to the other side of the house or you go have to go downstairs to, and go up to the other side which, which I find it really weird and they have somewhere you can connect on, on the inside but overall the, the bedrooms and the balcony area are pretty cohesive okay, generally this house is pretty monochrome, pretty harmonious colors that are not too offensive to the eyes to me. So overall, it's pretty good actually. There's a lot of good design styles, I would say. Pretty, I would give this lot a 9. The next lot is Ever with 3 bedrooms and 2.5 and bathrooms. Okay, uh, the 
the layout is really really weird to me from the front we have a front balcony and then suddenly there's a jut, jut out with a wood roof as a front door van start roofing on the top and then the whole house is light blue paneling and then we have a fenced-in garage at the side with a swimming pool at the back okay going in is whoa the wood textures and the are pretty striking and then we have two seating areas and then the colors are really really pop out doesn't look like it's really suited for the style of the house that we're going for we have a pink toilet with black sink and the bathroom looks a little bit too big to me because you can actually fit in a shower or a bathtub over there make it a full bath you see the one upstairs with yellow and green tiles has a similar size but then they didn't put any shower or tub nursery is small enough to to fill in the necessities which is all right we have two bedrooms over here and a bathroom with really odd green color shower and then i find it very weird that they don't make the the plumbing features consistent for the whole house the bed sheets are going crazy with this what is this pattern i don't know la okay this house is i think is one of my least favorites because the styles are really jarring and the colors really don't very match very well and the architecture layout it's really weird i don't feel this is looks really nice to me so ever gets a score of five our next lot is ginger with two bedrooms and one bathroom okay if you mentioned if this house is named ginger could they at least make it orange or brown or at least slightly yellow instead we have got this really dark black or gray house with green stairs and some really dark pur purple or pink windows but the layout looks pretty okay yeah from the outside let's look from the inside overall it looks pretty crap and really boring with very few color schemes to go around with all dark wood the bed bathroom seems pretty decent a kitchen and dining seems pretty reasonably sized so not going to complain that about that bedroom it's pretty small but they have room for other things at this corner you can put a desk or put a hobby item to, or things to work on the other bedrooms is pretty okay but seems a little bit dark and dull because i think they just put well one light and that's about it okay this house it's I would give them credit for keeping the style consistent with the dark color tone. Unfortunately, there are still some color pops that accents that doesn't really make sense for this house. I would say they have to brighten up the rooms with more within the same colors to make this house pop a little bit better. Also Overall, this house is okay by design, but not the colors. So I'm going to give this house a 6. Our next house to look into is Mediterranean Town Home with two bedrooms and two bathrooms. Classic Mediterranean style with an archway leading to the main door with clay, orange, yellowish walls terrace and balconies pretty all right i do take an issue of the alignment of the windows it's just rather want to put it like this in a diagonal rather than put it in a straight line but overall they are all pretty all right and one side of the house no stairs are uh, no windows at all um 
very small living room area with diagonal placement of the armchairs, pretty cozy little kitchen and eating area with mouse moves as the seating uh, for the place to eat and a pretty decent sized bath toilet at the front Upstairs, they continuing the style. I do think it's weird to have iron the inside of the house with blue and grey tiles are pretty alright. I do like the patterns of the wooden and earth tiles. Bedroom seems pretty okay. And then we have a balcony. That is the balcony. On the third floor, we have another bedroom with two single bedrooms. And that's pretty much it. Also, the idea of putting iron fence inside is pretty weird. Okay, overall, this looks like a better looking houses than we have seen before. So, it, it does give a little bit of a Mediterranean style what they skin. So, I'm going to give this house an 8. Our next house is Miramontes or Miramont with 6 bedrooms and 4 bathrooms. So this is going to be a huge mansion and wow, the first thing you can see is the staircase leading up to the main door and a hot ton of windows on the front and also at the back. Actually, there are various house of windows on the rear. This house, the terrace or veranda is all around the First floor with an exposed porch and it's all grey brick. Downstairs is actually have a car park space that's pretty interesting. Okay, actually the on the ground floor is there are rooms down below. We have two bedrooms, both of them have attached bath rooms. Both of the Bedrooms actually leads to a backyard. On the first floor, which is where the actual living room and the main entrance is, we have bean floral <laughs> living room sets, but I don't know why they don't put the three seater so far the same color as well. Facing a fireplace, which is pretty nice. And over here, we have the dining room area which I think is really weird that place on a diagonal. I think it can fit horizontally or vertically. It looks just as fine. On the other side will be the kitchen area, which is pretty cohesive colors, but with a, a pale green refrigerator, which is pretty okay as an accent. Upstairs, we have two more bedrooms. One of them is pretty oddly shaped. We just follow the layout of the house with a Jack and Jill bathroom with a small bedroom over the other side with a small bedroom on the other side and on the third floor way upstairs there's another bedroom facing here with a bathroom on the other side which has two sinks and two mirrors which I never understand why they need that many Okay, this is definitely a really large house, but I don't really like the colors and the design. It looks pretty drab. Honestly, this looks more like a golf mansion than, but, us. <laughs> so, overall, good for a large family house, but not really nice in terms of design. You might need to renovate here and there to make it look nicer. So, I'm going to give this house a 6. Our next house is Oak Grove Bungalow. This house has two bedrooms and two bathrooms. Alright, from the first glance, it looks pretty alright. I would rather have some railing at the sides for the front porch. And at the back, there is a little bit of a porch and a balcony on the upstairs here and there. It looks pretty nice. And they have two tone walls on the outside. Let's check out the inside. It's a little bit of a cramped space, which I pretty like. 
because I don't really like open, very bare looking spaces. Um, on the inside, the living room pretty, looks pretty alright with a little bit on the duller side in terms of colour, but it's actually pretty harmonious. That's a big improvement for a lot of times. The bathroom has weird colouring because with green humming systems and a purple mirror and curtains and a towel. And the kitchen looks pretty decently sized. Nice uh, kitchen counters and the floor, tile flooring back door and the really classic wooden looking uh, dining room set. Upstairs is where the bedrooms are. Hmm, the floral bed sheets, iron bed frame, pretty okay. The other side which has two single beds. I don't quite understand the diagonal placement on the other side because they could have just put it in the same direction or facing opposite ways and also a trestle in the middle looks pretty okay but you can add in more stuff to look with a little bit more personality so overall this house also a pretty decent size for a starter home for families not particularly exciting but it serves a serviceable job of a suburban home so I'm going to give this house a 7. Next lot is Prairie Smile with 3 bedrooms and 2.5 and bathrooms. Hey, this house looks uh, hugely sized with a drive-in parking space with a roof on top. Not a fan on the wall. It looks look a little bit drab. With red roofs, it's pretty okay. With the exterior being a pretty good layout shape with bunk belts and gable roofs giving detail. On the inside, we have narrow entryway leads to the upstairs. Going in, we have two different entrances. One leading to the seating area, another leading to the dining room. Although I would think the bar should face the dining room area rather than putting like a side like that it's pretty weird we have two entryways to the same kitchen which i would never understand why with really green dark green marble counters with dark green floor tiles bathroom at the back with green tiling as well we actually have two seating room areas actually which are my personal opinion, pretty much a waste of space that you can make way for other things for your sims. Upstairs we have living dining. Upstairs we have bedrooms, super bedrooms over here with really wild colouring for the bed sheet. And oh my gosh, the bright green sink and bathtub and it's on one side, on the other side is more normal with beige. I prefer the beige one. The beige one is actually attached to the master bedroom. Okay, generally, this house is pretty good actually, I would say. If not for the really questionable design choices for the colouring. And it doesn't really match the insides and outsides. The outside looks pretty drab and then the inside looks Pretty really experimental with that colouring. So I'm gonna give Prairie Smile a 6. The next house is Shady Bow with 3 bedrooms and 3 bathrooms. Okay, this house looks pretty decent with a bay window on outside with two tone walls on one side of the house. And I yeah, uh, why did you put the walls like this? That is uneven. One side that's cl closer to the red act walls and the other side, just it just spoils the balance. On the back, they have alternative staggered uh, arrangements for the windows. Interesting. On the inside, as you walk into the front porch, there's a wooden fence that splits to the green kitchen and green dining room sets. At least the bedroom, uh, sorry, at least the kitchen and the bathroom having the same counters all green throughout 
And oh, there's another seating area at the back. And we have the bookshelves dividing the living room area, which is a pretty smart idea. Although the colors for the living room area is much to be desired, we have really a lot of mismatch of colors. Upstairs is where the bedrooms are. Nice dividing area for the single bedroom to the wardrobe and then their bathroom that connected to it. Ironically, the master bedroom, which has the double bed, uh, it doesn't have the connecting bathroom. And the nursery at the back, which is all blue. And these are this is actually, actually the better one looking ones in terms of nursery. Okay. This house is actually pretty good. It actually has a pretty nice space and also has a nice backyard with a swimming pool area so this house is worth an investment so i would say this house it deserves an eight the next house we look into is super shack with one bed and one bath okay we have a car park space on the outside leads towards the house with one bump outside that's pretty much it of the design a really wide gable like this that stretch all across the house with a front porch not my favorite uh, roof design inside is pretty dark wood with some light wood accents for the dining room area and the kitchen with dark wood tiles for the dark clay tiles for white against white plumbing which is i'm pretty okay with it living room area is compact and small with a bedroom which is really dark i almost can't see anything with very little lighting okay super shack is pretty decent although i would say that the there is a need of more lights and also the coloring could be a little bit more exciting although it's a bit more cohesive Inter compared to the other houses, I would rate Super Shack a decent 7. Last but not least is Unfurled with 3 bedrooms and 1.5 bathroom. We started with a modern house and we're going to end with another modern house, which is mid century style with the same brick stone accents with pa wood paneling. This house, in this case, is a wide gable house with low rise roofs, which is pretty mid century style with a backyard area with a planter box of bamboo. Alright, let's check out the inside. Okay, living room with blue striped sofa set. Do we need four coffee tables? I guess not. With a little bit of a textured dining chair set facing the fireplace looks pretty nice the kitchen area looks pretty alright and bathrooms seems pretty decently sized although there's another two sinks like this and a bedroom at the back over on the other side they actually have two more bedrooms one of them has two single beds another one with really patterned bed sheets that leads to the back yard area okay generally this house does seem to limit their color schemes which actually works in their favor sometimes less is more which is always a good thing and this mid-century house modern house seems to be working well i would think so this house actually is one of the better ones i would say so this house deserves a nine okay here are all the scores of the sims 3 lots and houses bin houses what do you think please leave me a comment i feel that with create the style and customized colors watches you would think sims 3 would be having a 
field day with their ability to customize. Unfortunately for EA, it's a mess throughout. Some very good gems here and there that is suitable to put in your custom neighborhood. Anyway, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to West Anime Sims for more updates on retro Sims content. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!